Okay, hello everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Florence Tofa, and uh, I am my work with Mobile Web Ghana and the American Spaces. And we are excited to bring you our January edition of American Spaces and Support Program. And uh, we are so excited about this session because it empowers people, give information to people to be able to find a job and to be able to do have access to information that will lead to an increase in economic well-being or economic activity. And so today I'm very privileged to have uh, someone I know, uh, Jeffrey. I read a lot about Jeffrey, but I know Prosper. Prosper serves as a partnership analyst and a founder of Pro Rights Foundation and SDG focused organization on education and pioneering 2022 community engagement exchange program. I know Prosper did some sessions with some girls. He, he took them through how they can get some skills related to technology. And uh, Jeffrey, you were saying something? No, I'm good. Okay, good. And so I'm reading just a bio. If you just join us, I'm reading a bio of our facilitators. I'm reading a bio of uh, Prosper, Tony. Prosper, is, I hope I'm, I'm getting your name right. Uh, yeah. He is a U.S. State of Department designed alumni, and uh, he has designed a couple of programs for young global leaders leading in public private and non-for-profit sector addressing the world's biggest challenge. In 2017, he was recognized by Impact Square UK uh, as part of the 100 Faces of Impact Fellow in Philanthropy category and selected as the youngest delegates for Common Purpose Africa Venture across Boundary Leadership Program in 2019. He is an alumnus of Global Shapers Community, Accra Hub, and a member of the Project Management Institute, Ghana chapter. So now I move to Jeffrey Kwabna Yeboa. Uh, it sounds like the sports commentator, you know? So Kwabna Yeboa is a figurative sculptor and space decorator. He has over eight years experience in hand creative abilities to support the story of garbage as a resource by manufacturing high-class decor objects out of vehicles and technological waste. Jeffrey is a member of the first cohort of the Community Engagement Exchange U.S. Department of State, a TEDx speaker, and an Army Africa Awards nominee. He is also an alumnus of the Ghana Climate Innovation Center in Ashasi, a fervent champion for youth empowerment through skills and an echo warrior. Prosper and Jeffrey or Kobna Yeboa, you are welcome to today's session. And we are hoping that we are gonna explore, hear your stories about how uh, you managed to land a job. We all know that, uh, uh, especially in this part of the world, it's, it's getting a job and getting a high paying job is a difficult thing to do. And so a lot of people are really expecting, looking forward to hearing your side of the story, how uh, you landed your first $1,000 job. I mean, when you do the conversion in Ghana cities, you know, that's almost like 12K or a couple of, a couple uh, like so much Ghana cities so when you do the conversion. So uh, I am on my ears. I'm going to listen and I'm going to try to see if I follow your steps, if I can get my first $1,000 job. And so uh, uh, I'll start with Prosper. You can share your screen if you have any presentation. It can be uh, anything that you want to, any information you want to give as well. And then after that, we will dive into questions. So if you have questions, I see a lot of people joining us from different places. Uh, I see, I see Bernardo and Sir, you're welcome. Charles, Daniel, Emmanuel, Eric, uh, Etonam, Isaac, uh, McCrane, uh, Quindelin, Ruby, 
standards, and a lot more people are still joining. I welcome you to this session. Please feel free to put your comments in the comments uh, in the comments box, and we'll pick it up. It's going to be a discussion. Over to you, uh, Tony. All right. Thank you very much for the introduction, uh, Dr. Florence. Uh, thank you all for joining, making time. Um, we understand that was a bit of a glitch, but we are happy that you could join us. Um, thank you to my colleague, Jeffrey, for honoring the invitation as well. So I know this topic is a really interesting one. That's why if we have a room full of people joining, the main reason is they want to understand how to learn their first job. I know $1,000 means a lot across. So I would want to focus on five tips on how to get your first job. Um, currently, economically across the continent, there is a big of a challenge because the economy is not stable. So in two years ago, if you convert this money into your currency, you can see the value that it's it's been at the moment that the currency of Ghana City to dollar is probably around uh, 11.7, hovering around 12 in the black market. So um, appreciable, but not as much. So let's go dive deep into the conversation. I can understand about two thirds of us people on this call either might have applied for a job before and may not have gotten it. But the question, the big question that you need to ask yourself is, what did I do right or what have I not done uh, correctly in order for me not to get the job? So let's go that dive in. My name is Prosper, as I've already been introduced. So during the conversation, we'll be learning about a job. Um, it's as easy as you know it, but you need to understand the definition of a job, a job that is something that is very legal. We will talk about a problem case the skills that you need to acquire and the job set skills and platforms that will be useful to you, the networking tips, and then I'll wrap up with my experience and we'll have questions and answers. So do that with me as I go through this uh, presentation. When you look up the word a job across different platforms, even through dictionary, what you could find may range around uh, a piece of work especially a specific text that has been designed to you. So if you are working with an organization, you kind of come across this thing. You have been assigned a specific task within a time frame for you to work on and you have an agreed price, meaning that you have negotiated that at the end of the day, this is what you want to take. And based on the value you bring, the organization agrees to give you that. Well, the second definition also says a, a, a post of employment. So that could be a full-time work or a part-time work primarily. So you may decide to get on a job that would be to provide a particular service and you negotiate the price at the end of the day. So let's understand that a job needs to be legal, needs to be defined within a, a frame of uh, work. And then the output should be what you are negotiating for at the end of the day. I understand that currently jobs are varying. So there are some jobs that may not give you what you require in terms of uh, the output, um, what you require in terms of what you're negotiating for. So it could be a manual job and then you have to just take on that. But if you are specifically going into a particular type of job, then you can put value on what you're doing and request the organization to give you what you deserve at the end of the day. I came across this very intriguing data while I was preparing for this uh, presentation. And the reason why I'm sharing it is because most often we tend to forget what we ought to do. This problem has been there for many years challenge of getting job and based on this data as you can see you can see that people from the ages of 18 to 24 mostly youth had responded to this data on a platform being managed by a very good friend called Larry Sarkofi who kind of curate content for over 139 people on whatsapp called the plugin african youth platform 
and then 129 people responded with their inputs. And these are the variations of what she came up with. The second layer, as you see on the screen, is indicating the gaps and the number of people with the educational level. As you can see, about 116 people have bachelor's degrees and then 50 people have master's degree. When you move to the next layer, you can see that about 71 people are fully employed. There is a part-time, that's 22 people who are part-time, and then about 16 people are self-employed. 46 are unemployed. That should tell you the staggering number of uh, people who still are looking for job across the globe, even in our continent. This data is based on, on Ghana's, uh, Ghana's uh, job market and based on a particular sample group of people. When you look at the last layer, the question was, why are people not getting jobs or why are people not getting the right sort of information to help them navigate their way around the job market? And you can see that about 84 people respond to the fact that there's insufficient networking opportunities and connections. This could be of a challenge to you as well, that where do you get the right information from? Which groups of people do you network with in order for you to get what you need? About 74 people also are saying that there is a lack of information or awareness of opportunities. So this could be a travel opportunity in a specific uh, work that you could work in or a personal development opportunity that could help you land your next job then the list of it would be cultural norms and expectations that may limit access. So this happens if you have to work in different jurisdictions, what are the limitations that make it difficult for you? But one thing that intrigues me had to do with the middle, uh, the second layer from the left, which has to do with the educational level. As we can see about six people are only those who responded to working in the vocational space. That means we need to balance that numbers because there is a shift. And as you'll be hearing from my colleague, uh, Jeffrey, who, whose work is around the handiwork, whose work is around doing something very uh, uh, useful, you can, you can hear what the vocational training space is like in terms of the skills, the knowledge, and then expertise. Moving on, we want to touch on education across. So academic qualification is essential. So when you go to school, you're acquiring a skill, a particular education in order for you to work in a particular industry. I started off as a, 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 an electrical engineer, did my first degree in that, I transitioned into a different space, which I'll be coming to talk about briefly. But academic qualification helps you move to the next step and what you ought to do. Then the technical skill, which we classify as the hard skill, bring some sort of value to the work you do. So if your skill is tailored in auto mechanic, that is a technical hard skill that people would want to pay for because you are solving a particular need. In order to complement that, you ought to have like a soft skill. And in this uh, current dispensation, most companies are looking for people that can have a blend of both of them. So the blend uh, ranges from you having that interpersonal people skill that you're able to talk with people, you're able to uh, negotiate, you're able to communicate, you're able to um, have that emotional intelligence to analyze situations as and when they confront you, you are able to thrive in a working environment and you can negotiate your way out of, of the job. So these are very essential things that anyone on this call at this point in time is considering should have at, a, at, at least in order to navigate the job search uh, market. Moving on, there has been a huge challenge, like I, I, I shared with you from the beginning of the data that, that we, we both worked in. You realize that people commented on the fact that they haven't found the right information. This may not be as a result of the information not being available, but this may be as a result of them not having access to the right platforms to finding that. So as you know, job set skills varies from thoroughly visiting specific websites. So you ought to go tailor your content and find the right information. These are very few that I'm sharing for the sake of our conversation this morning. 
the first platform is Indeed. So Indeed is one of the biggest job search sites and it's, it's located in the US, but it runs across. On the platform, you can find millions of jobs that is tailored to your need. It's if you are a copywriter, if you are a content creator, if you are a graphic designer, whatever platform, whatever skills you have, Indeed kind of provides you the leverage to showcase that and get different kinds of clients globally in order for you to work. Then the second one is Zip Recruiter as well. That helps you to find the right skills, uh, jobs that are tailored to your area of specialty. So that is also a good one. Fiverr happens to be a job platform. Mainly you can call it the hub for tech jobs. So even if you're in Ghana, you're in Rwanda, you're in Kenya, you are in uh, Tanzania, you are in uh, Jamaica, whichever country you are, the 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 platform has been designed in such a way for you to have some sort of leverage. There may be limitations in terms of um, how to get payment done because it's a company based in the US. So you just need to figure out how to you know, put that across. But these platforms are accessible to whichever part of the country you are. And I would want us to take note of, of that. And the Global Jobs, which also happens to be a very good platform for those working in the developmental space, especially if you are working as an international development person, you work in nonprofit, you work in for-profit, you work in public sector, or this is a good platform that has turned out to be the hub for anyone who is looking to growing their career and finding the right uh, job. Then the last one is LinkedIn. For most of you, you may have heard of it, you may have been on the platform, but LinkedIn has helped quite a number of people find the right jobs that they need. The good thing is you ought to learn how to find the job, filter them to your location and start applying. One essential thing that most people don't talk about often when they are looking for a job have to do with networking teams. So I know essentially people find it very difficult to network, but networking is an art that needs to be developed for someone who is outgoing, who is uh, able to um, you know, interact with people very easily, it will come off to you so effortless. But if you're someone who are, is introvert, you find it very hard to even strike a conversation with someone, it becomes very difficult for you to even go up. But these three tips should be a good way to help you navigate your way around. So networking, professional networking simply means that you are concern about learning about the person that you're talking to in terms of what opportunities they have and how that opportunity can benefit you. So one tip you ought to emulate have to do with taking time to document the names of people, friends, colleagues, you know, that could actually recommend you to a job opportunity that you already have the skills for. So let's say for instance, one of you on the call, maybe we call you John Doe, you're looking for a job in the uh, nonprofit sector uh, as a project manager, and you attend a conference where people are talking and one person introduces themselves as ABC of a particular company. As a networker or someone who is looking out for an opportunity, the best thing for you to do would be after the, the program, you could approach, share your experience, and then move on uh, from there. You take contact, you stay in touch. That is a good way of you uh, for trying to step into the next big thing of looking out to getting a job or getting an offer that would be much higher than the previous one. The second tip had to do with focusing on building lasting relationship while being authentic and considerate when connecting to people in your professional network. This is a high tip that I believe most people take for granted. Uh, the reason being that relationships are not supposed to be uh, handled in as and when you want it. At a point, it may become transactional. And in this frame of uh, setting, you ought to build lasting relationship and be authentic. It doesn't have to be a one-way thing because you, you met someone who offered you a job and at the end of the day, you haven't inquired what you could do to support the person. So build lasting relationship, check in and find out ways you could support each other, especially if it's a professional a relationship as well. That could also 
uh, apply to any form of relationship. The last one is you should take time to fully maintain and manage your network. So personally, what I do is I have a list of contact emails, even personal contact. I'm a people person. So uh, I tend to focus on that more because at the end of the day, you're looking for someone who can uh, help you navigate your partner in a certain way. So either I may send uh, a thank you message to people that I have. So maybe I could be a broadcast, or people that brought some value to me at a point, then I share some sort of messages with them. So that is a way of managing my network. That might be useful to you. Now, this is where I'll be you know, narrowing down towards the latter part of the conversation so I could give way to my colleague to quickly present. Uh, my experience might not be yours, but my experience is quite interesting. Uh, like I said, I started off as a, a electrical engineer in terms of like taking my education and that as a first degree. I transitioned into uh, working in the uh, non-profits, but then I still have my feet around uh, for profits as well. So I love projects. I love to manage things. So in somewhere in 2022, um, I was selected for this fellowship by the U.S. Department of State called the Community Engagement Exchange. And being the first pioneers of that, it meant that I had to prepare myself for it. Mind you, all of this came because I had built uh, the confidence, I built the network that would be a gateway to where, what I'm getting into. In that period, I was able to work with the picture on the left, as you can, on the right, as you can see, um, you can see, you can spot me somewhere. The, the man standing in the, on the left side with the tag wearing the white shirt introduced me to the board of the organization that I had volunteered with. And through that conversation, I, I had to find a need for one of the board directors. So based on that, um, I introduced to them a virtual teaching. So at the end of the day, I was able to find a need. Mind you, my first degree was in engineering. So this person that he introduced me to, the son is studying engineering. So I had to prepare myself, build myself, and share that knowledge with the person. I negotiated the pricing and I was able to get my first gig, which I could I would call virtual learning, that paid me that amount that we, we, we cited in our conversation today. This is to tell you that a job may be temporal, like I indicated from the beginning. It may be a short-term thing, but your goal is for you to negotiate and put your foot right foot forward. And I, I would say on the third day that if not because of this opportunity of experiencing this man and the young group that I have worked with, I wouldn't be introduced to someone who also need a service for his son, yeah, for her son, right? So my experience is the trust sense. And there's been different kinds of uh, projects that I've worked on that I was able to acquire quite, quite an, an amount of money close to what we, we are talking about. So anyone can actually get more than the amount that has been quoted on our conversation for our conversation today. But in order to do that, you ought to have what I shared, which will be the gateway for you to get in on there. So I, I don't know if I still have some time, but I know that I should be wrapping up uh, so my colleague could also step in and share experience. So I will be ending my conversation with that. Getting a job is a good thing, but Preparing yourself for the job market is very important. At this point, jobs are staggering around. There is a big uh, demand for jobs in certain sectors. So what will be helpful for you to do is to research into those areas and prepare yourself for it. It's also okay to also bootstrap when you don't have the resources. And it's also okay to upskill into a different sector altogether in order to make things possible for you. So I'd like to uh, take a pause and um, if we have any questions as we draw the curtains on my part of the presentation, please feel free to uh, ask. I'm sure the facilitators will handle that and I can respond to them right off the bat. But if not, um, I'm happy to hear you share your thoughts in the comment session and then I will hand over to the moderator at this point. Thank you, Prosper. You've taken us into a deep dive uh, 
uh, as to where we can or how we can get our first gig. Uh, and then, I mean, though you mentioned Fiverr, you mentioned, indeed, you mentioned uh, Global Jobs, LinkedIn, you mentioned a couple of, and what we should do when it comes to networking. Because the testimony or what you shared is related to managing your network. You were referred by someone, and then through that, you got some opportunity. So, and then you give us the top three uh, tips on networking. And uh, thank you. I believe that this, when people follow these tips, I believe that in one way or the other, they will be getting closer to their dream job or getting a good gig. Uh, I want to go straight to listen to Jeffrey. I don't want us to start with questions or else we might not end now. So uh, we go straight to Jeffrey and then Jeffrey after that, then we take questions. So please feel free to post your questions in the comment box. And then Jeffrey is, is coming to Jeffrey. I like you since you are into arts and other things. Uh, we need to talk. I mean, it's the first networking tip. We need to <laughs> we need to talk. Uh, you need to pass by and give me some wild ideas. And you never know, you could you could also land your first one king. <laughs> Jeffrey, over to you. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Florence. Good morning, guys. Uh, depending from uh, depending where you are from, <laughs> afternoon to as well and evening. Mm. So, um, I am an entrepreneur. Um, I make sculpture pieces from recyclable uh, waste resource, and at the same time, I am a material designer. Um, I work with Ripple's Deco and Design and Square House, and then the name of my Artwork brand is Hypabana. So I started from the University of Ghana, Legon. The picture you see on the screen is, is what I started with. I started with stickers in people's rooms and stuff. Whilst they are busily studying in class, I will be doing this. So that also be, be able to support myself in school and um, money for food and whatnot and what have you. So, um, as time went on, I I was able to exhibit my artworks with Switch Africa Green in Burkina Faso. Um, I did one in Dubai with uh, Neck Foundation's um, Sustainability Initiative. It was with the Dubai Expo 2020. Unfortunately, COVID couldn't permit us to go back again to exhibit fully. But we were able to do the first exhibition with Net Foundations in Dubai. And then recently, I had one with the American Embassy during their eight day. And then uh, a much recent one is the Afro World in the University of Ghana. The picture you see on your screen is one of my art pieces that was bought by the second lady of uh, Ghana, Samara Baum. Now, this is where I am now with my artwork. I am bringing all these things so to boost the spirit of people who want to start their own business as against joining a business. I haven't worked for anybody before, so it will be very unfair for me to speak from to speak from a worker point of view, but I am an entrepreneur and um, player. So let's move forward. Now, what I wish I knew all this while starting my business eight years ago, I've been bootstrapping. I have been um, trying to get my things together right from the university till now. Unfortunately, I didn't collaborate with a lot of people. I didn't um, have the spirit of team working. I didn't even know Coursera existed. I never built myself really, really well in uh, in my field of business for the first for the first year to three years, and I didn't take off my branding. Those of you who I think are following me on Instagram, you can see that for all this, while I only have one picture on my 
Instagram profile. So you, you might think business is not even going on, <laughs> but things are really going on. Now, I am talking from experience, so you would learn from it. And also those of you who want to go into uh, starting your own business would also pick it from where I started off and then you wouldn't make the small, small mistakes that I made and I think I'm still making. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, Prosper is really helping me out of that field. So things are cool. Now, um, if you're starting a business, you should really learn how to collaborate with people. It's it's very, very important. Currently, I am collaborating with architects, interior designers, um, interior decorators in the field of my business. Because as a sculpture artist, I make artworks for hotels, I make artworks for uh, living spaces, I make artworks for urban spaces, I make artworks for education. So my market is more of word of mouth, it's more of, because it's a luxury brand, so I cannot be marketing my stuff anywhere at all. So you need to collaborate more with interior designers and architects and building con contractors. Now, collaborating with them you would learn a thing or two. You would understand that you need to have a human political relationship. You understand that you need not to be greedy because the, big, the biggest mistake we do in our field of business is we want to own everything. We want to get everything that comes out of the business in terms of profit. But when there's loss or there's liability, we want to shake it off to whoever, family members, friends, and other work colleagues. So the more you collaborate from wherever you are, you get to realize that you're not even be earning thousand dollars. It's way more than that. <laughs> way, 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 way more than that. And we need to have um, inculcate the spirit of teamwork. Prosper is in the um, I think is it is is in the UK studying, but we are collaborating and doing a lot of things together. Even from where he is, and I am here in Ghana. We are doing a lot of things together, earning good money, very good money, decent money. Now, whatever field that you are in, whether being it um, finance, um, art, any form of business at all, I think you need to add the schooling aspect to it. Most of us might not get opportunity to enter the university. Most of us might not get opportunity to um, be in incubation hubs, but I think Coursera is available. There are lots and lots of platforms that you could be on to lift up your entrepreneurial horizon. Coursera has really helped me a lot. I have, I'm doing a lot of courses that I'm paying for, unfortunately. There are free courses as well in Coursera. So whatever field that you are in, just go to Coursera. Put it in that okay, um, sculpture artworks, finance, um, cartooning, whatever thing it is, just go there. You definitely get some courses. Follow the calendar, learn, and then apply it in real life, and it works like magic. It boosts your capacity um, building as well when you do this. Also, branding is very, 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 very important in business. Branding is who you are when you are not around. Branding literally is what you are when you are not speaking, you know. Who are you? How do we know you are this if you don't talk? If we Google you right now, what are we getting? If you go on your social media right now, what are we getting? If we ask the next door neighbor, oh, do you know um, Florence Stoffer? Do you know Prosper Tony? Do you know Eric Fodro, do you know Solis Spacing? What is the next thing that is coming out of the person's mouth? And that is when you have to know that. Teamwork, respect, understanding, building a very good network, as Prosper mentioned early on, is very, very important. What people say about you when you are not available, it's, 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 it's essential in whatever you do. If even you want to go against my field of entrepreneurship, I rather want to work for somebody, you still need that. It's very, 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 very important. So these are the things that I wish I knew um, like five years ago, 
I know them now, but I wish I knew them really earlier. I would have been way bigger than what I am today. So now to an an, an exciting future. Whatever do uh, whatever you do in this world, I believe you have to do it with passion, or you don't even try it at all. Just 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 don't move in everything you do with 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 seriousness. All these art pieces you are seeing, I designed them myself. I built them myself, but I did it with a team. I did it. The uh, the art piece in the middle with um, Samira Balmia in the picture, for instance, when I was designing this, Prosper was in my space. By then he was in Ghana. And I got a lot of ideas from him while speaking with our kids. So it's very, very essential for you to really involve people in, in things that you do so you really understand more of what you want to do and educate it to the world. So um, I wouldn't like to take much of your time. I'm not too good with uh, presentations, but I try to be as natural as ever for people to <laughs> understand the real deal. And I do more in people asking me questions for me to tell them what my experience is and how it can help them. If you leave me to talk, I, I don't think you will really understand fully what I really want to say. So at this point, I'll leave it to the audience. If there's any um, question you want to ask pertaining um, entrepreneurship, I'm game. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey. And uh, it's a pleasure listening to you and what you do. I think that uh, uh, we need to connect. And I'm sure a lot of people also need to connect with you as well to just see how you are doing. And you mentioned that you started when you were in the university trying to get some money to buy food and other things. But one of the questions I want to ask you is that, uh, so when, what course did you study in the university? Were you at Legon? What course did you study? Did it, does the course have a bearing on what you are doing currently? Oh, this is an interesting one. So I, I was studying information studies, theater arts, and economics. I dropped okay. theater arts out of peer pressure, and I studied information studies, and economics studied me, unfortunately. So in level 300, I had to choose between continuing with my studies with the little money that I have cooked for my business or shopping and putting that money in my business. I chose the latter after sitting down with my the love of my life. She's the only one that I'm trouble to anyways in this world. So I sat down with her and I said, hey, this is what I have. This is what I want to do. I want to stop the school and concentrate on my business. When, I, when I'm able to build a business very well in a stance, I promise you I'll go back to school. And she agreed. So if you look behind me, I mean, the yeah. city of Ghana right now, I have started school because now the business is functioning on its own. And now I'm reading oh, Bachelor of Fine Arts instead of Economics. So everything I, I, wow. I did in school never had any effect on, on um, except for the one-year course I did with Ashesi University. On climate wow, so you mean you were in school, you were doing a degree program, and then you stopped, you were so excited about business, you stopped, and then you went to focus on your business, and then after that, you went back to school. Yes. This is amazing. This is an interesting story. This is an interesting story. I mean, we will come back to the peer pressure thing, but I think for me, the $1 million question is, at what point, I mean, you mentioned that you were struggling when... Uh, you were in school and then how to get food. At what point did you start making good money? Like, wh how were you able to make your first 12K Ghana cities, which is equivalent to $1,000? How how easy was it? I mean, because a lot of our audience online and a lot of our audience joining us, there are also people who are also struggling. They are in school. They, are, they, they want job. They want this. They want to do A, B, C, B. They also have a passion. They have a, a skills that they want to develop but it's difficult for them to connect the dots. So if you can help me on that, that would be great. Okay, um, thank you. The first and foremost, my story might be way different from any other person. You could start your business today and the next day you might be earning $12,000. You could start your business mm -hmm. uh, 
today and you have to wait about two to three years before you end up. I had to wait for about five years, prosper if I'm right. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Prosper, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so it's Jeffrey's network. Prosper, I'm going to join your team. I can see that you guys are having fun <laughs> with all this, with all this re reinventing your lifestyle and everything, stopping school, working, and I'm going to join your team. I hope that Jeffrey, I hope Jeffrey can join us. But uh, Prosper, for you especially, for me, the 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 big question is, uh. You mentioned how you got your first one gig, uh, but the big, big question for me is what role is AI play in economically empowering the youth? Uh, I mean, we all know that AI is now doing a lot of things. People are now having access to information than they've ever had in their lifetime. Uh, how can AI help, or maybe I'm talking about the positive aspects of the AI, I'm going to the ethical aspects, yes, but how can AI help the youth or people who are looking forward to earning good income online? How can, like you mentioned some of the platforms and other things, how can AI facilitate uh, the acquisition of helping people to get jobs? I don't right. know if you've thought about that. Yes, I, I think, uh, I mean, one of the most important thing we ought to learn about is the introduction of AI, which is at artificial intelligence in most of the uh, job sectors, is essentially to help us navigate our way around uh, that, right? And the goal is to help us kind of understand what will be changing in the next uh, few years and how can we adapt to, to that. And five years ago or six years ago, for students, you would notice that there is nothing like, uh, how do I call it, that AI tool that allows you to even Google to get questions answered. Or when you query it, it gives you responses. But as of now, we have such a tool that is available to make things work. So in my opinion, what we ought to do is to adapt and learn the use of these tools in our day-to-day -day lives. Let's also bear in mind that not everyone will have the interest to, to go into that part. So we ought to just let people know the value of these tools and what they could benefit from that. And that will position them for the right path. So I see the advancement of AI in different sectors to be a good thing, but how are we matching up to meet up with the demand of such tools? Even mm -hmm. in design and what, Jeffrey was sharing. I mean, very soon, you definitely won't be using the normal tools to design. He might probably use more sophisticated tools to design. And this is because AI has made work much different. So I think we need to kind of position ourselves in whichever field that we are in to learn about the tools and learn about the opportunities that are available and then go, go get them. For a start, it wouldn't be that easy, but you ought to know what you're bringing on board and how to get it. Um, so I, I hope that question has been answered and I'm open to it. Yes. Time. So in a nutshell, we should build our capacity. We should get ready and right. prepare for the opportunities that AI presents. Jeffrey is back. Jeffrey, you were saying something, some some key learnings in your life. You were sharing it with us before you, before you dropped off. Yes. So um, I'm sorry, my line broke. So... All, all I'm saying in a nutshell is don't be in a hurry to to make money as an entrepreneur. You're the last person to pay yourself, really. <laughs> you pay everyone before you pay yourself. It's just until recent that I'm counting four to five figures in terms of dollars. It's been a very long journey, eight solid years. That doesn't mean it will take you eight wow. years. It could take you two to three years, but I just need you to be to understand that you have to be very, very resilient, understand that business is a spirit. It needs you to, to really push it up. You are the pastor of the business. You need to make sure that the, the congregants in the church that is inside you 
are really fed before your own personal self. So I'm making good money now because I've been able to wait for a long time and I've been very persistent, consistent, and hungry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If there's any other question, I'd love to take it. Yes, there's a question for Prosper. Prosper, there's a question for you. You mentioned you studied engineering at the yeah. start, and someone is asking, uh, the course you study in school, does it have a bearing on your economic power or what you actually earn? And uh, how do you overcome some of these challenges? Like Jeffrey mentioned that at a point he dropped out of, he dropped the course because of peer pressure. But now I've seen that he's going back to do, even dive deeper into that same course. So right. yes, I, I want you to share some, some light on that. Right. Okay, so I'd like to share this experience because, um, I mean, some people might be familiar with it, some might not, but my interest in engineering at the time, and this would be like a, a story that most of you might have heard growing up, you want to do something and your parents encourage you to pursue a particular path because of the available opportunities. So um, I studied science for my uh, uh, high school, and so it meant that meant I have to pursue something in that part. Personally, I was thinking I would do medicine, but eventually uh, engineering was presented. My dad also encouraged me to pursue that part because of the job market. What did I learn? I learned so much about problem solving while studying engineering. I learned about mm -hmm. the available opportunities that are there in the energy sector and what you ought to do to tap into it. Mind you, in Ghana, because we have different audiences on the call today, there is that gap between academia and industry when you finish your first degree. And why? Because you are not positioned in that industry after your service, during your service period. You ought to either work in that space and how you can position yourself directly into going into it. So I, after service, I, I went straight into working with a, 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 a private sector organization that was into engineering related stuff. And whilst doing that, I had already started a nonprofit. So connecting my work in that space to impacting community and creating opportunities for others became something that I felt so much in love with. So I had done some work after national service. So I have the employee employer relationship kind of uh, uh, kind of concept. So I know what it meant to work for someone and also transitioning into a different nonprofit. Uh, a company at the time before um, bootstrapping, working with the uh, person in the US at the time to provide learning opportunities for her ward. So I would say that if I hadn't studied engineering, I wouldn't be in the position to teach someone calculus and engineering courses. Now I transition, currently I'm pursuing an MPA program uh, at the university here in the US and um, the program is me learning about policy and I'm focusing on cyber policy aspect of the program. So you can see the correlation of all the experiences, what I have done and what it meant, you know. So just as Jeffrey said, he was studying something earlier on. He found out that this wasn't uh, very helpful, but at the point he learned one or two things from that and now he's fully back doing it. Not everyone can take five steps back to do it. So mm -hmm. what you study at, at, as an entry program is essential. However, you need to reinvent yourself as you grow and be in one path thoroughly throughout. Yeah, so that's what I would, I would like to add. And uh, I think there are more questions. Okay, so uh, Jeffrey wanted to ask, uh, add something to what you've said. Yeah. Um, also, on the schooling bit, and this is just for the entrepreneurs, please. Uh, what I learned in school, I'm really using it because it's not only about the DYDS. You you learn a lot of things in, in school, how to live with people, even in your, in your, um, your halls of residence, your rooms. You learn, you learn a lot of people, like a, a lot of things from people, how people think, how people react, even to your own 
products. It's very, very essential. So it's not just about the things in the classroom, the things around you too, you can learn a lot of things from. I hope I'm really communicating. It's very difficult for me to see exactly what's on my mind, but I'm sure people are getting it. Thank you. I mean, we are excited about your story. I mean, uh, even if you say a line, we are okay with it. We are, we are excited <laughs> about it. About, about about it. And I, I think that someone is asking, especially for Jeffrey, I think this question goes to you. And I think he is a graphic designer and artist. Uh, and he's asking, is AI taking over or replacing us or take our job as digital artists? Because we think you can create image, create content, create anything you want using AI. I don't know if you've taken a look at the possibilities of what AI can do. So whilst he is trying to, uh, whilst we are trying to give uh, $1,000 job to someone, someone is also worried that his job as a digital artist will be taken away by AI. Okay. So there, there, in the office, we were talking about this very issue. I think that's just about two weeks ago. We realized that we shouldn't worry about the problem. We should rather concentrate on the solution. The more you're worrying about the problem, the more the problem is winning. Concentrating on the solution is better. And I'm saying this because as, as, as creative, there are a lot of things we can do that AI cannot do. Especially with art, AI is too fine. People don't like fine art. People like rustic, realistic stuff. AI cannot do everything. So I think you have to find your way, look at your niche, for the graphic designers, it's a bit problematic because AI, it's kind of having a lot of tools around that. So you have to find a way to make your work more unique in a way, because if any client sees any, any graphic design designed by AI, they see it and they don't love it. They don't like it. They only do with it when the same thing is done by you. But when you evolve, when you maneuver your way around it, when you add the human feel, the human touch, the emotions to it, there are emotions to graphics. I'm sure the graphic designer really understands what I'm saying. You really get what it is that you want. You shouldn't be afraid of AI. I think you should use AI more to your advantage other than seeing it as a competitor. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, okay. just in this briefly. So one thing that we all need to learn is AI is a generative tool that relies solely on what the uh, person who fits it to actually do. So AI cannot do what you think it can do. So if you tell AI, can you draw a picture of Jeffrey sitting down? Based on all the elements that you have keyed in into the AI, that's what it's going to pick out. So that should tell you that someone is still controlling AI in a sense. AI does not have the autonomy to do things beyond what it can to do. So we need to learn how to use the tool. And in that, in so doing, we'll be able to beat the, uh, the, the challenges that we may confront. And I think, uh, thank you very much for adding that, uh, Prosper. And I think that both uh, Prosper and Jeffrey, they're speaking the same language innovate, evolve, use AI for your advantage. Don't be afraid. Don't focus on the possibility of it taking your job, but just focus on using it to your advantage. Create wild things, things that are not static. Like uh, Prosper mentioned, it is what is in the database that it's giving you. So uh, focus on that. And I think that we will take just one more question and I'll just read it out. Someone, uh, a young guy who is, uh, I believe, also want to start a company is asking, where do I start from? What do I do? Are there opportunities? And I think and this is one of the questions that young people are on the minds of young people, especially where there are no jobs and the person, have, uh, the person has gone through school and the person thinks that I really feel like starting something on my own. Uh, where do I start? How do I get traction? How do I get customer? What are the what are the processes that I need to go through? And uh, I believe that uh, Professor mentioned uh, he started uh, his non-for-profit organization, and then Jeff, uh, Jeffrey also 
you mentioned that you've started your own company. So both of you are entrepreneurs, like in reality, uh, you've okay. practiced, you've had some good practices and uh, things that have not worked for you. If you can throw light on how young people can go ahead and start companies or contribute to problem solving in their various community through startups, it will be beneficial. Okay, so I'll go first. Uh, so sharing practical tips, start where you are with what you have. Currently, you have a tool, mobile phone, you could join the session to listen in. You can take pictures of whatever product or services you have. You have a Facebook page where you can market. So remember I talked about networking tips. Look into your network and say, if I want to sell, let's say, a product uh, in the um, manufacturing sec uh, sector, right? People are looking for um, a particular product and you have it. All you have to do is take pictures. You may not even have to uh, order the services of a graphic designer, but take pictures and send it to some of your friends that I have this uh, supply and I'm looking for buyers. So if you know someone who would want to, can you please share with me? This is a more, uh, how do I call it, practical way of starting out small, meaning that you're not going to depend on bigger, uh, bigger chance of resources to start out because you wouldn't get it when you're starting. Another thing you ought to know is if you have the right mindset frame, you can design a business plan and proposal. And if it's something that is very viable and people are interested in, you pitch it out. There's resources, there are hubs. You can talk to someone at the mobile web and I hope they also have certain sort of network to link you to startups or entrepreneurs that are doing things in that space. So you have a plethora of opportunities around you, but the challenge that young people face, and I faced this a few years back, was you have to bootstrap, you have to go and do the work. You have to actually do so much from starting off like, Put yourself out, try to build evidence for the things you're doing over time because it wouldn't happen overnight. You have to start doing. To start, start off with what you have. You have the tools, take pictures, share with people, ask for recommendation, learn how to do graphic, use Canva. Just do basic Canva design with the product you have and share. Build level of trust with people because if you are even going for a business loan, all of this thrive on trust. So you need to start with what you have at where you are. And that would actually be the springboard for bigger things that, that will come your way. And you need to be practical in the things you're, you're learning and how that would have a direct impact in, in what you're doing. I hand over to Jeffrey. Thank you, Prosper. I think Prosper has, has summed it all. Uh, it's just about starting with what you have. You know, when um, eight to seven years ago, I remember asking these same questions and they say, start with what you have. Uh, they say the same things we are saying right now. And then we'll be like, oh, this is a cliche. Oh, what is this? Give us something. Say something. We want to hear something. Look, there's nothing else. It's the same thing. Start with what you have and start right. Be honest in your dealings. Make people trust you. Even if you are earning one CD, account for it. Account for it. Be just diligent in your work. That's all. Uh, and then I think, just as Prosper said, branding is very necessary. Take pictures of what you do. Have a track record of what you do. Have a social media account. Don't be like me. I'm very, very lazy. In social media, have a social media account, post your work there, let people see what you do. Yeah? Let people see what you do. It's not every day that, oh, God will help, God will help. Human beings have to help you. They have to see what you're doing for them to come and help you. So please, don't think we are giving you something that we want to Google and we are just going to say to be time. This is real life. If it's 10 cities you have and you want to start a Kyoto business, start it. The main thing is to see it moving. You know, business is moving. Business is not starting. It should move. If a day you even sell one, it's okay. The next day, be willing to sell two. If you still sell one, it's okay. The next three days, sell two or three. If you sell one, 
it's okay. If you sell zero, it's okay. Just hope that the next day you sell again. That's all. Just keep the engine running. Keep the engine moving. Somebody out there will find you and invest. A friend of mine, we were in the same senior high school, St. Peter's Senior High School. And not knowing he's been monitoring my business for a long time ago, I didn't even know. Now he's on my tail, running after me to invest in the business with $37,500. On my tail, every single morning, he texts and calls me, bro, what's up? What are you doing? But he has seen that the hunger has been there for long. And if he puts food in that hunger, it will generate into something else. So move, move, start with what you have. Move. That's the only thing I can tell you. Unless, of course, you want to see me in chambers, then that is <laughs> Starts with what you have as uh, Jeffrey is advising us, giving us the best advice as a startup, especially where we are. We don't have uh, many groups, angel investors, investors who you can just pitch your idea and they are giving you $1 million to just start. Uh, I wish that it's possible in other parts of the world, it is, but they are giving you the best advice because they practically live here and they've done so much in their businesses. And so thank you. Uh, as a reminder, this program is brought to you by uh, American Corner Global in partnership with the US Embassy. And we do this, it's a monthly program. And this year we are introducing certificates. If you attend the program for 20, uh, for 20 sessions, if you attend 20 sessions, you have the opportunity to get certificates. And we will do CV interviews, mock interviews, CV writing, and everything that you need to do how to resolve conflict at the workplace, anything that has to do with get ready to get you ready for the job. So these are the various sessions that we're gonna have. But I think that somebody has asked a question, said yeah. and I need to and I need to just pick that this is the last, last, last I promise a uh, prosper because prosper is not here with it, but like it's mm -hmm. so many miles away and it's lunchtime in Ghana whilst it's breakfast time for prosper. He needs to go and get some cocoa around. <laughs> and so I'll take the last question and that is it. And uh, please feel free to connect to them. And this is how Prosper mentioned networking. Feel free to connect to them on LinkedIn, on Facebook. Connect to the US Embassy Ghana Facebook page, oh, the US right. Embassy Ghana YouTube page as well. And connect to Mobile Web Ghana uh, pages as well. And so, uh, and, and somebody is asking, I did engineering. Is there a place for me to look for engineering job? And Prosper, and Jeffrey, I think that sometimes this is one of the issues that people deal with. They study a particular course and they think that it's I just need to get a job in that course. I am uh, I I I am uh, maybe a public speaker. I said it public speaking, and I need to get a job in public speaking. And so he's asking, is there a specific place to get in an engineering job? Or you have another great piece of advice for this gentleman. Okay, Jeffrey, do you want to go? Okay, first? okay. Um, wait, Prosper, are you going? Yeah, no, you go. Go first, then. Okay. Okay. So for the engineering um person, I am an interior designer as well. So I work with architects. I work with engineers. I work with building contractors all together. And what I have seen is that they need people to be in turn. They need people to come around. They need people to see what is really going on in the world out there of engineering. But they are not getting because engineering students are directly looking for jobs. Go to any um, construction site. There are, there, are, there are a lot of them in Accra. Just enter. Ask any of the workers. You are looking for the engineer or, or the foreman. You see the foreman. Talk to the foreman. Tell them, oh. You are an engineering student. You are looking for the person managing this very contract. You are looking for the contractor or the engineer. Go to them directly and tell them you want to understand. You want to be there and understand. The, the things you will learn in just six months is more than what you start in, in school to learn. And you realize that you will make a lot and lot and lot of money at the same time learning, going on site, moving from here and there. I did, sorry, economics did me, and I read information studies. Now I'm reading Bachelor of Finance, but I'm building buildings because I move with these engineers, I move with tractors and stuff, and I learn, and I'm getting money from that side as well. So this is real life. Don't wait for opportunities. Go. 
if I am an employer and you walk to me right now, that Jeffrey, I, 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 I want to work with you, whether you sack me or not, I want to work with you. You come one day, two days, three days. I have no option than to keep you. So please, don't wait. Go. Yeah. Plus, yeah. I think you can take over. Yeah, I, I, I mean, what, what Jeffrey shared is very practical. It's like just being hungry for what you want, right? I think for a very long time, a lot of people fail to be hungry for what they want and going after it. Be aggressive in a, in a more uh, positive way to learn. So naturally, if you had done an engineering, let's say construction engineering uh, or uh, mechanical, electrical, civil, you want to actually work with companies like the Talos, the ECG, the Glucose and things. These are companies based in Ghana. Out of Ghana, you want to work with JE, General Electric, um, Slumber Gym, like all the big companies that are working in that industry. But mind you, you ought to start somewhere. You ought to build the capacity. So for the person who asked that question, one, just do a Google search about engineering jobs in Ghana. Go online, type that. You may find very useful links that you can narrow down pick contact and also be more specific into the region that you are based in. So if you're in Accra, then you'll be looking out for companies that are based in Accra. Don't be too fixated on the big corporations. You can go to the smaller ones. You can see a company that is starting out. They need people who are hungry to learn. So rather approach them. Rico, ECG and all, they're already big established companies and you might not even have the 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 opportunity to fully learn so much if you are to be there as compared to being with a different uh, company. So my first tip for getting jobs, searching for engineering jobs abroad, look look for the platforms that I mentioned. If you are a software engineer, whatever it is, use Fiverr. Go online, just look for type the top ten website, twenty twenty four for remote jobs or even working engineering jobs. You will find a number of them. So that will be my closing remarks. Start where you are with what you have, and then you will appreciate the journey ahead of you. Thank you all once again for joining. We're happy to share this with you. The start where you are and start with what you have. I think that is the best statement we can use to end this today's session. And uh, I have so many questions uh, on my table, but I think that we have to do part two of this. Uh, and uh, at a point, the Prosper is busy. That's why we can't do part two. But if he gives us the go, uh, Prosper and Jeffrey, the two of them are very busy guys. And gives us <laughs> if it gives go go ahead to so, all the wonderful things. But surprisingly, we had a very stable audience, like they are learning. Someone said good info. I'm not sure that uh at a point you tell me first when you are feeling let me know Jeffrey, tell me when you are feeling like the realm in which you guys are moving is like you are flying too high at a, a supersonic speed. So Please, when you are free, please kindly let us know. We will organize a part two uh, of this. And uh, starting with what you have is a real deal. Like somebody has just posted a comment and there are other questions that I can ask. But please feel free to connect with them and ask them your questions directly. I mean, when we compile some of them and we send it to them, we can turn it into a platform. But I really want to thank you, Prosper and Jeffrey, for joining, for your patience, for sharing a wealth of information, five years, 10 years, eight years of information, the journey life, it's really good for me. And I have learned a lot and I'm going to start using some of this information to see if I first one gig, uh, first one gig job in stable. Uh, thank you for joining. And as I mentioned, please uh, connect to all the channels I've mentioned, connect to the US Embassy, uh, YouTube page, Facebook page, and connect to us for more amazing programs that we bring your way. And so we meet again sometime next week. And, and to also bring this to their great team. We have time to bring this again to this platform. I want to say thank you for joining and have a wonderful Bye-bye.